Welcome to Installation and Maintenance of Health IT Systems, Pilot Testing and Full-Scale Deployment. This component covers fundamentals of selection, installation, and maintenance of typical electronic health records, EHR, systems. This unit, Pilot Testing and Full-Scale Deployment, will discuss rollout phases of an EHR system to smaller test user communities and to the entire organization. The objectives for this unit, Pilot Testing and Full-Scale Deployment, are to Identify pilot testing, deployment steps, and group for pilot testing. Develop a plan for training pilot users. Gather and prioritize feedback from pilot test. Recommend amount of legacy data to preload. Develop a plan for implementation using best practices. Identify post-implementation practices. As the rollout date approaches and internal testing winds down, at some point real users must be allowed to interface with the new system take it through its paces, and provide feedback. We call this process pilot testing. Pilot testing is designed to catch and correct potentially costly errors before they are magnified through full deployment. Pilot testers not only put the system through its paces at a technical level, but also reaffirm that efficient workflow practices have been adequately modeled during development. Defining a pilot testing group is largely dependent on the organization's size, structure, and its priorities. In larger organizations, consider creating a steering committee to assist with identifying pilot practices or departments. This committee should include a cross-section of users pulled from the stakeholders of the project. Developing and using a readiness assessment prior to the pilot testing phase can be beneficial for assessing staff abilities and to identify technological shortfalls for each department that may need addressing prior to the rollout process. The readiness assessment can also help devise a final rollout strategy by identifying which departments are more willing and capable of more ambitious rollout schedules and which departments will need additional readiness efforts prior to implementation. Training for end users is critical for a successful software rollout. The initial training session should also be used to identify expected changes in workflow the user may need to address. It's only natural for people to not retain many of the details during the initial training session, so the initial session should be followed up with additional sessions as the rollout date approaches, so the user feels reasonably comfortable operating the system without being totally dependent on the rollout team. Initial training should include necessary topics, even if they are complex and unlikely to be retained fully. Efficient physician documentation or note writing is an example of an area that may require subsequent training updates to be scheduled. Some skills will apply to every user group, and these should be covered thoroughly in the initial training. Specialized groups, such as nurses, physicians, receptionists, and records personnel will benefit from training customized for them. Several strategies for providing user training are available. A train-the-trainer approach has the system vendor train a small group who in turn train the remaining users. Standard classroom style training where the vendors create in-person courses can also be efficient in training large numbers of users. Web-based training is often self-paced and convenient, but care has to be taken to ensure that training is effective. One-on-one -on -one training is often the most effective, but the most expensive for time and resources. Sometimes a variety of training methods can be engaged to better reach the workplace staff, each with his or her own preferred style of learning. EHR training time will vary depending on each user's responsibilities. For example, at least one institution raised their training allocation from four hours to over ten for physicians after identifying comprehension issues surrounding different forms used for documenting and prescribing medications along with a variety of other tasks. As stated earlier, the workflow and pre-implementation training should be adequate enough to enable the staff to retain enough information to comfortably use the EHR minimum support from the implementation team who will be busy mitigating other technical issues. In most ways, you should consider the pilot test of your EHR as a mini-trial run of the final rollout strategy. Begin with setting your pilot implementation dates and setting up training sessions with your project users. Here are some important tips about your pilot installations. Ensure your pilot users are able to remain flexible on project timelines and functionality. The implementation, rollout team should develop a detailed plan for addressing both perceived and unperceived issues that might arise during and immediately after the rollout process, 
including a downtime plan should the EHR system need to be taken offline to resolve any technical issues. You should communicate in advance to your pilot users who to contact should issues arise during the rollout period and make sure adequately trained technical support teams will be available throughout the transition period to quickly address any user or system issues. Provide a standardized communication process for internal departmental communications and feedback centralized around an EHR implementation clinic liaison in order to facilitate more effective communication between the EHR team and the site. Develop and provide a formal orientation to the project for new members. This should ensure that everyone is aware of the policies and procedures driving the system. Complex modules or system additions such as charge capture may be deferred until later during the implementation process. Complexity in an initial system rollout may delay acceptance, but a simpler system that adds more useful but more complex features later can smooth the transition. Identify all stakeholders and attempt to involve them in the decision-making process so that different views and usage patterns are represented. This is especially important for those who are intended to use the system regularly. Medication dosage, disease management, diagnostic test accuracy scales, and other medically-based instructions should be reviewed prior to inclusion in the system. Independent experts should provide this review to ensure that prescription errors are eliminated or minimized. This is particularly true for in-house applications. Ask users to report any potential mistakes. It's important to remember that even during the pilot and beta phases of a project implementation, System stability is essential to gaining user confidence in a system. Even brief periods of instability can leave a negative impression on your users long after the instability has been resolved. Once the pilot implementation has occurred, it is important to listen to your pilot user feedback to isolate and resolve potential glitches in the system or make interface adjustments to resolve severe workflow issues which may have arisen. Try not to get wrapped up in customization in the early stages, however, as it takes time to adjust to new work patterns. Actively solicit feedback so you can implement improvements before problems arise. Take nothing for granted. Slow resolution may demoralize users and result in low adoption. Surveys are helpful for collecting user feedback, and they can address such topics as workflow changes, user interface problems along with the adjustments the users would like to see made, and data errors the users have noted. Keeping a journal of experiences and processes is important for keeping up with the rich multitude of issues that you will encounter throughout the pilot, and a formal post-implementation review can also help in capturing and organizing this data. Now that we've discussed the process of pilot testing, let's move into the issues to consider when planning full-scale deployment. The first is what to do with your legacy data. Established practices will have many records in old charts. Define the parameters for selecting the chart information or other data that should be transferred into the EHR. Given the resources and expense required, you may make the decision based on age or relevance of the data. You will also need to decide which records will need to be incorporated as part of the initial rollout of your EHR versus which records will need to be migrated over in phases. What to transfer and when should be determined by practice preferences, physician needs, and available time and money. When evaluating how many resources to invest up front, however, consider that when your practitioners have to reference those paper charts later on, that carries a cost as well. The delay in a paper chart lookup is an incentive to not consult older information. The more data loaded into the system, whether by you or your vendor, the sooner you'll see the benefits of the EHR. Regardless of how much data you choose to preload, plan to keep the old paper charts accessible for the near term. Choosing to transfer none of the data is the cheapest option up front, but it will mean more resources later on in accessing those old charts. Keep in mind that not all parts of the old charts will need to be accessed with equal frequency and that your practitioners will get more bang for the buck if high-value data, such as medications, medical conditions, immunizations, and allergies, are available digitally. Focusing on these data could be an effective way to save resources in the data transfer. If you do choose to transfer all types of chart data, 
consider limiting the scope in terms of time, such as from the last year. In general, the older the data are, the less likely they will need to be accessed. So the biggest bang for the buck should come from transferring the most recent data. One of the difficult decisions of an EHR implementation is the deployment strategy. Do you take the big bang approach and get it done with quickly, or do you phase in new processes and technology over time? Quote, should all physicians go on the system at once? Should you start all functions at once? Ideally, all physicians in one office should go on the EHR together. Otherwise, the office staff will need to run at least two different sets of processes for paper-based physicians versus EHR physicians. That would be not only confusing, but also inefficient. However, if your practice has more than one office, there is no overriding reason that all practices have to go on the EHR at one time. In fact, depending on your practice's resources, you might be wiser to roll out one office at a time. A few practices have successfully implemented all functions of an EHR at once, in a big bang. The consensus, however, is that success is more likely if you implement functions sequentially, in what is known as phased implementation. Unquote. Adler, 2007. This is especially true in larger organizations where Big Bang implementations, despite careful planning, have led to chaos in the practice. In some cases, clerical staff, nurses, and providers' work nearly ceased. Obviously, this can result in substantial productivity losses and inability to retain training. When applying the phased implementation approach, start with straightforward functions that require little interaction with the system. This will allow staff to develop familiarity with the system, and more interactive functions like messaging, notes, or prescription writing can be added. The EHR vendor will often have recommendations for phased rollout. Here are some tips for a successful implementation. Train, evaluate, and support your users throughout the implementation process. This is essential for optimizing user efficiency, effectiveness, and system adoptability, as well as for building user confidence. Test your system thoroughly before and after the final rollout and resolve any issues, problems, or bugs as quickly as possible. Remember that the end users determine the success of your implementation. Support them from the beginning of implementation, throughout training, and in post-implementation support. Realize that implementing health IT is not the ultimate goal. The objective should be to maximize the efficiency, quality, and effectiveness of your care delivery processes. Support the implementation through proactive organizational policy. Facilitating user adoption through training and continued support can help you achieve optimum results. Just because the rollout has been completed and your IT teams are beginning to settle into a normal routine, the job is only beginning. Now your plan has officially entered the maintenance and update phase of the product life cycle. There are some tasks you should do to close the gap. Now is the time to run another baseline test to determine any shortfalls associated with increased system usage. Based on these new baseline projections, decide where you stand for further growth. Are your system resources holding within projected margins? Solicit user feedback as soon as you feel they have become acclimated to the system. Examine the feedback for common workflow and technical issues that need resolving. Continue to provide an avenue for users to submit feedback and suggestions for improvements. Hold a project review meeting with all the key stakeholders and implementation players. Discuss what went smoothly and where things went wrong. Finally, hold a customer acceptance meeting with the vendor. Sometimes called a closeout meeting, this can be an opportunity to summarize your user acceptance testing and finalize customer service agreements. This concludes pilot testing and full-scale deployment. In summary, pilot testing is an important step in a process involving user and automated testing procedures designed to catch and correct potentially costly errors before they are magnified through full deployment. We also discussed various training methods designed to get your users up to speed with the new system prior to rollout and how thorough training can minimize loss in productivity and expedite the adoption process for your users prior to a full deployment, including train the trainer, classroom style, web-based, and one-on-one -on -one sessions. Next, we touched on different implementation methods, 
the Big Bang and the phased rollout methods, along with the pros and cons of each. We also discussed some implementation tips, including understanding the importance of satisfying your users through efficient support strategies and remembering to stick to the real goal, maximizing the efficiency, quality, and effectiveness of your care delivery processes. Lastly, we outlined some very important steps during the post-implementation phase. Holding a project review and maximizing user acceptance. Creating baselines to assist with identifying system issues. And beginning the maintenance and upgrade regimen that addresses errors and workflow issues in a timely manner.